This show is brought to you by Rotary International. Service above self. Welcome to a new show of Ahon TV, and we are today in, on the Vancouver International Wine Festival. Did I say it right, Harry? Yes, yeah. Yeah? yeah? <laughs> All right. And I got Harry Herczyk here. He's the executive producer of this festival. And Klaus Kurten, he is with Henkel. Right, Klaus? Absolutely right. Yeah, is, it, is, is it just yeah. Henkel or is it also Deinhardt? You know, yeah, it's, it's more, but you know, the company is called Henkel & Co. All right. Henkel but, & Co. But before we go into the nitty-gritty, let's check out this clip which we have pre-produced about the festival. Okay. Okay, let's check out what we can find here. So this is David, and this cheese <laughs> is made here in British Columbia. This now is, we have a, yeah. we have a smoked we powder, this, this, but yeah. uh, you could even pronounce it the right way for us in German. Yeah, uh, Rauch, uh, Rauch Käse. Rauchkäse. Rauchkäse. And uh, this is made from a German recipe because we smoke this Gouda in a house with um, a real German recipe for uh, sausages. That's what the wood chips that we use, which that's why I'm not going to tell you which wood chips we're using, but it gives such a nice cheese, doesn't it? Thank you, David. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Wir haben Fritz. Was für Wein habt ihr denn so? In Deutsch? Ja. Gut, wir haben äh, diesmal trockene Weine dabei. Ja. Haben äh, halbtrocken oder off dry und eine Auslese. Das ist ja gut. Äh, sollte ich einen probieren oder? Keine. Ja, welchen? Der heißt Jean-Baptiste Riesling Kabinett. Jean-Baptiste Riesling Kabinett. Ja. Das klingt wie Saarland. Ja, klingt ein bisschen nach Frankreich. Ja, so ein bisschen Frank Frankreich oder Frankenreich. Das war der Name von dem Ur Urgroßvater. Sorry, which one? Ah, Jean-Baptiste. Jean-Baptiste Gunderloff. Und über den hat Karl Zuckmeier ein Theaterstück geschrieben. Karl Zuckmeier ist in Nackenheim geboren. Nee, ja. das wusste ich nicht. Sie wollte die Großmutter von meiner Frau heiraten. Im Ernst jetzt? Ja, im Ernst. Also Gundelach, ja. Gunderloch. Die hat ihn verschmäht. Da hat er sich mit dem Theaterstück Der fröhliche Weinberg an ihr gerecht. Gute Story, das muss ich nicht. <lacht> Klasse. Uh, first of all, you, you were talking German five minutes ago, uh, so your real name is Harald? Harald, Harald Alfred Herczak. Harald That's Alfred. That's cool, huh? Yeah, but it's klingt irgendwie österreichisch. Yeah, my Eltern um, sind von uh, Salzburg, Österreich. Salzburg, Österreich. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 and uh, uh, Bozen. 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 Ja, und äh, ja, wie, kommst, wie kommt es, dass du jetzt hier in Vancouver bist, in Kanada? Seit wann schon? Hier geboren? Oder? Well, my father and mother uh, both Please, uh, continue in England, in yeah, Germany. Yeah, my father you know? and mother <laughs> yeah. went uh, nach uh, Detroit. Oh, oh, Detroit. oh, they went to Detroit. Yes. Okay. So, 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 you, so you immigrated from, from the United States to Canada? Born in Windsor. Oh, nice. Grew up in Detroit. Oh, got it, got it. Got it. And then uh, after my mom passed away, my dad and I mm. drove ours. 1969 Malibu, yeah, okay. all the way from Detroit to Vancouver. Yeah. No kidding. And I have that car to this very day. Wow, oh, it's a real vintage 1969 car. Malibu. That's right. It's wow. a vintage car. But let me uh, let me ask so, you something. This is now the 35th year. Is that correct of the of the wine festival? Yes. Um, why is what what has changed significantly if you think about it from the very first year 
where you probably weren't here yet, <laughs> I guess. I was or, here in the 70s, but you were here, uh, yeah, but was you I were a not drinking it. age? <laughs> um, would they no. let me in? But no, you know, I can paint a picture for you. Yeah. Which is, I mean, I'd like you to just imagine uh, the theater company, the Vancouver Playhouse Theater Company, and let's say one of you was a board member on a board of governors. And one of the important things about it being on a theater company is to raise funds because people, the cost of a ticket to a theater show doesn't pay for the full costs. So one of the board members, John Levine, mm -hmm. he had this idea. He said, you know, bake sales and rummage sales are way too boring. We need to come up with a new idea to raise money. I've got some connections with Robert Mondavi Winery in California. Let's invite them up and do a tasting of wine, sell tickets, and raise funds. So in 1979, the first festival was one winery, two days. Okay, wow. A thousand people came. They made some money. So then year two, Shadow St. Jean from California came. And then there were some California wineries in Oregon, Washington. And then it just, over 35 years, here we are. Wow, congratulations, really. I mean, it's, it's quite a success. But let, me, but, but, but let me ask you, 35 years ago, the, the liquor laws were not so strict as they are nowadays, correct? Or I was it exactly the, the other way? I don't know what the liquor laws were like. <laughs> the, the, the founder of the festival said to me once, I said, how, do you, how did you produce such a, a great festival? He was the chair for the first 10 years. Yeah. Okay. And he was a restaurateur, he loved jazz, he loved the performing arts. And he said, Harry, don't ask for permission nor forgiveness. Do what you do passionately and just do it. And that's what he did. Awesome. And he got the support of the consulates. That's very important. Yeah. Okay. Like the consulate of Germany, the consulate of the United States, because these wines come under consulate privilege, yes. which allows them to come in duty-free, tax-free, for the purposes of awesome. raising Thank funds you. for charity. So, so you want to tell us that the general consul is here actually tonight? Yes. Do you know one? Oh, very well, cool. Well, all the consulates that's that have wines, we have 54 events. Yeah. Uh, and all those events would have someone from the Consulate from General in attendance. Excellent, excellent. They sanction the events. Well, that's true multiculturalism. <laughs> I mean, like Canada, you know, Canada is like it. Uh, absolutely. I mean, how did you, how did you get all these countries together? How many, how many countries are? You said 57. Uh, we have 54 events, 15 countries. 15 countries. I, I think what the key to it is that a couple of factors happen. Uh, wine started to become something of interest in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. California was emerging as a major force in the wine world. And so Vancouver is the closest market to California. It's mm. the closest international market to California. So California got its roots in the export market first in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And Canada, which is now the fifth largest importer of wine in the world. People don't realize how much Canadians import wine. And that's because some of the other major wine drinking countries, France, Spain, Italy, Australia, they don't import wine. So that's why is this is such it's a true. vibrant international mm -hmm. wine city. It's true. I mean, uh, but how is the shift nowadays from the consumer? Well, let, let's say 10 years ago. Uh, do we still, I mean, we have a lot of Asian uh, uh, consumers, I guess, now on the wine festival. Is it true? Because China is, uh, they need, uh, China needs a lot of wine import to China. I've, I've heard that the, they really open up in that case. Uh, is that, how is that, for example, with the, with Zekt? Uh, with the, the German sparkling with, wine. Yeah, with the German sparkling wine. We say in German Zekt. Huh? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zekt. Uh, you know, for, for the Chinese market at the moment, it's, it's, um, it's too early to say something. Too because, early, huh? Uh, the Chinese market is more a red wine market mm. and uh, more a still wine market. Oh, I see. No bubbles. And it, it, to, 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 to train somebody to switch from red wine to a white sparkling wine, that's difficult because you have to develop two times. First from red to white and then from white still wine to white bubbles wine, sparkling wine. Now, and this takes some time. Now, I mean, uh, okay, before we get now to the medium uh, part, uh, the rosé, yeah. which is between white and red. Can I can I actually say that 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 simple or is that yeah you can say it as simple you know we say the <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I would say the pink pink the pink one think pink no think pink, pink. pink how is the consumer market shifting I mean uh, is wine will wine always be in or would you say well actually we've got the young people who are shifting more to beer and to uh, and it's more the elderly people who are not elderly but more the more the gourmet person who loves wine. How, did, do you see any change in the last 10 years? Well, I think over the 30
35 years or oh, maybe 35 the last years. 10 years. Yeah. Uh, we did a symposium yesterday at the uh, Wall Center for Dialogue on how to build and sustain and nurture a wine culture. And uh, I made a presentation of how the wine festival has contributed to that and we had other speakers. And I think what what's happening is that wine comes from a place. It is something that has authenticity. It's not just an alcoholic beverage. It's not just that it's wine. You know, it's like your wine comes from a place, uh, Deutschland, and we have 15 countries. So the wines don't just come from the countries. They come from Napa Valley or from a specific vineyard. You know, when wine Specific has soil. No? Specific soil, yeah. specific terroir. And when wine or beer or has a story to tell of where it comes from and who makes it, people get very loyal to that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's really special about the Wine Festival is that when we do demographics, we have the average age is in their 30s, late 30s, but almost 30% of, of our attendees are about 30 and under. Mm -hmm. We have people at the festival in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And so building a wine culture isn't just whether it's popular or not. It's about sustaining a, mm -hmm. a, a wine and food tradition. Mm -hmm. And I think Vancouver really embraces that. But yes, craft beer movement, yeah. uh, cocktail culture. You probably get asked, well, why, maybe we need to make cocktails with your sparkling yeah, this, wine. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. So, so is, is there something actually going on in that direction that you use wine to mix it with other uh, beverages? Probably mm. more sparkling wine as a still wine, but I see, I, I would add, Harry, I would add at one point because drinking wine, this is something which shows tradition and cultural. It shows lifestyle, and it's it's something else than a, drinking a beer. You know, you, you normally wine you drink in a good mood, and you you enjoy your wine. You are discussing about wine. You don't discuss so much about beer. And there's an amazing thing. It's about <laughs> engaging with the senses. You know, yeah. it's 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 about the sense of smell. And it's about the sense of taste and texture. It Harry, isn't would just you, what you, think would about you it. allow me to? Oh, please. Because we would be talking and talking, and you know, you I'm, know I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe, I'm, just you know. You know, and and thank you for some common <laughs> sense. You know, one of the things that's really special about our wine festivals, we require yeah. the owner, the producer, the senior executive. They have to come to our show. Yeah to pour their wine. <laughs> so it's not like, hey, can I have it come to the wine festival, have a glass of wine? It's like, yeah. wow, you made this wine? And yeah. the respect that people have when the person who is part of the production process comes, I mean, you find that, right? I mean, that's, you know, it makes a difference. It makes absolutely a difference. And for me, I have to tell you, it's now the first time that I'm here. It's yes. for me a little bit consumer research because I'm living in Germany and to pouring out the sparkling wines, looking in the face of the people. This is something extraordinary. I see whether they like it or not. And I see, oh, they like it a little bit more sweet. But at the moment, they like it more rosé. You know, this is something, for me, it's like a consumer research, what's going on in the market. Because in Germany, probably you don't know this, you are very proud that Canadians are importing so much wine. In Germany, we are the biggest market for sparkling wine. Right, twenty-two percent of the twenty-two percent of the worldwide consumption yeah. of sparkling wine takes place in Germany. No kidding. That means oh, every fifth bottle is opened. Yeah, in Germany, opened means this. Wow, I like that sound. You yeah. like this sound? We were all the time talking yeah. about wine, and uh, since thirty-five years now, we have yeah. we have we have to have a little sip. You know. Thank God, I'm not driving, and I will. This is so. This is a tasting portion. This is only a tasting portion. This tasting you, know, portion. you don't even have to finish it. It's yeah, very important. Yeah, 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 I just want to taste it. Yeah. So, but seriously, a Henkel Rosé, uh, you don't get that easily in Germany, even. Yeah, or no, you? you can. You know, Rosé. You know, what is probably very difficult to produce is a red sparkling wine because the, the, lead, the leading category, a red sparkling. Yeah. Wine. This is a pink. Ah, okay. Ninety-five percent of the ninety-five percent of the market is white. Yeah. 4% worldwide, I would say, it's pink and there's only 1% which is red. This is coming because champagne, the yeah. leading category. Have you ever seen a red champagne? Um, no. there's think of Australia, the, the, Shiraz. No, yeah, no, this, in, in, that's in, not in, in Russia. No, it's yeah, not yeah, champagne. Yeah, 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 you know. Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute, the Krimsekt. But that's not a champagne. <laughs> that's not a champagne. Cheers, no, my friends. Cheers, cheers to life. Cheers. 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 Yeah, but what I can tell you regarding um, the pink, the pink is at the moment 
the driver for the growth of sparkling wine worldwide. Which one is the main country besides Germany buying this? As I told you, Germany is 22%. Yeah, that's Germany. Yeah. And if you that's take, home, that's if, home turf. Yeah, but if you take Europe, yeah, it's 80% of the world consumption. That means sparkling wine is mainly a European beverage. Wow. But interesting, but interesting. It's catching up. Yeah. You know, markets like Canada, markets like Australia, yeah. United States. They like the bubbles. This probably. category, that's, you know, the sparkling wine category is growing because, worldwide. Yeah, probably because of the Germans. And, German you know, influence. Yeah. And is that because people are having sparkling wine not just on birthdays, not just on New Year's, not exit. just weddings? Thanks God, it's Friday. Because and that will be and, champagne. Well, and also oh, yeah, beer has on. bubbles, right? It's a refreshing, yeah. okay. thirst quenching. It okay. just is a fresh way to start the evening, isn't yeah. it? And uh, now sparkling wine, you would fit into that category also of a wine festival. Oh, it's absolutely. wine. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, Otherwise, we have yeah, to yeah, so, uh, we have to close and, the booth uh, of Henke. Uh, <laughs> each year we choose a, a category. Yeah. Maybe that's a little bit misunderstood. Yeah. That needs a little attention yeah. because people might be I'm not scared of it. So, for example, in 2008, our global focus for wineries was if you have sparkling wine, please bring it to the festival. Let's get people drinking it more than just for celebration. In 2010, our global focus was rosé, yeah. which and also now, embraces yeah. sparkling wine. And I find in the Vancouver marketplace, because of those initiatives, uh, sparkling wine and rosé consumption is very has become very solid. What it is is people aren't scared of sparkling wine. Oh, is it a special occasion? But yet it elevates the experience. And with rosé, people think it's a feminine drink, but absolutely, it's, absolutely it's, a, right. it's so food friendly. Rosé yeah. is a great. It's my favorite lunchtime wine. Yeah, and yeah. sparkling for breakfast, but you know that only happens on. Yeah, you know, this you learn <laughs> because you have German, well, Aust German language foods with. Uh, in, in Germany, we like to have a glass of sparkling wine for breakfast, you know, because I, your heritage. I'm just saying. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, in terms of markets, uh, what kind of what kind of people are sent over here? Actually, I, it, it seems to be a very important festival. Just you know, because I didn't ask you that. So. Yeah. What makes it? Uh, yeah. What is that? That secret. You. Know, it, it really is that we engage the community. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're a fundraiser for our new charity, the Bard on the Beach Shakespeare Festival, but. It's, it's a festival of the trade. We have a trade component, which is very important because does the producer want to pour a glass of wine for someone who buys one bottle at a time or cases and cases? So the trade, the buyers, the people who serve the wine are really important. But we're also a consumer show. And it's just sort of that blend. And I think what I've been told feedback from producers is what the producers say is, I go to trade shows all over the world. There are shows that are only trade, not consumers. And what's exciting, Vancouver is a great mix, city. Absolutely. You come here, you connect with buyers, mm -hmm. but also wine is for the, for the consumer at the end of the day, and it's a chance to connect with the people who are passionate about your wine. And that's what I, I find, the mix of trade and consumer kind of ignites the producer's passion and one of our requirements is that the owner producer has to be here and thank you for supporting the festival and coming all these years and and and, and bringing your wine and your personality and uh, what 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 makes that connection worthwhile for you to to fly all the way here yeah, um, but yeah you know you pointed out um, normally you go on a, on a trade show and you you talk only to buyers and you get the information from the buyers but we have a product, and the product, you know, you have to feel on your on your palate. You have to to to, to learn about the product. You have you have your personal taste. You know, I'm 21 years in the business. When I'm pouring out and when I'm offering my sparkling wine, I see it on the face. What is good or what is not so good. And it's for me a little bit. You can say it's a little bit like a market research, but a personal market research. And it's important to get to be close to the consumer. Otherwise, you're not successful. The consumer is the one who's paying the bill. That's, that's right. And so, paying the buyer's bill. Yeah, exa yeah. You can, and, and paying me. That means the consumer is paying the bill so, at the end. So what, what would you describe, because you travel the world, what is the Vancouver market like in terms of your market research in comparison to Toronto or US or where, where are we going in our wine tastes? Are you finding more sparkling? Definitely more sparkling. 
it's definitely more sparkling. It has something. It's linked to uh, to um, a new socio-demographic situation of the population. Uh, 20 years ago, it was uh, when it was the 15th um, Vancouver Wine Festival. Probably the women were more married and stayed at home. Now they are independent. They're mm -hmm. getting their own money. They have their own flat and they want to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And um, these are the targets. And it changed, it changed. And therefore, I think it's a sparkling one. By the way, worldwide is growing. Um, and uh, you see it. More and more sparkling wine brands are appearing like mushrooms. But, but would you see actually Vancouver as a kind of a test, test field where you say, okay, no. we've got a new product. Let's, let's check out if in Vancouver it works. It will work everywhere. Yeah, because you it's know, such a mix, you know? You know, this is uh, exactly what I said with market research. You mm. can try, pour out something new and you, you get a feedback. On the other side, each market is local. You know, Canada, if you compare Quebec with, with uh, BC, yeah. different wine markets, different wine markets. You know, Quebec is more, if you would say, old, old world yeah. wines. BC is always so, so quite world strong markets. ones, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, each market is local. And uh, just to wrap it up with, with Henkel, you came first time to Canada, not you, but Henkel, the first... No, I'm, looking, I'm not looking so old. <laughs> no, I'm not exactly. looking so old. No, no, much younger, much younger. <laughs> but, but the first bottle of Henkel reached Canada, came to Canada when? You know, the company was founded in 1856. 1856. This is 157 years ago. Yeah. And the first bottle of Henkel was shipped. What do you guess, Harry? Any any idea when the first bottle of yeah. of Henkel was shipped to Canada? No. Idea. Just give a guess. Just give a guess. <laughs> no, it was it was in 1876. Wow. Was it, it a sweeter style then? <laughs> Honestly, I did, this I didn't track back, but I could tell you who was it and how many bottles he, he purchased yes. because we have everything in the books. Wow. You know, Germans, you know, the Germans have everything totally. in the books. Yes. <laughs> so it was a, speci a specific customer, like a buyer or? It was a buyer uh, and the first, right, no the first shipment was going to Montreal. Sorry for yes. saying this, but you know, oh, the history that was... was the city. Good, yeah. And it was, you know, I was personally, I was also surprised about this fact, but it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you had a long journey. Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell you in those days, there was a big difference between shipping a bottle to Berlin from Wiesbaden yeah. or should ship it overseas. They get special packages, they get a special capsule because of the different time uh, the, um, temperatures. Yeah, it humidity, was, yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. this, was, this was very interesting to, to read this for me, for me personally. So yeah. I thank you thank very you. much, gentlemen. It was really interesting. Um, I will not zip tonight oh, because yeah. I'm with a car. Okay, so, but, Terry, okay, but I, will, do it. I, I will do as if. I will do yes. as if. <laughs> cheers. 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 And uh, yeah, I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check out our website and go to YouTube. We have all the shows on YouTube and on our Ahon TV channel. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks.